Hi, everyone. Hello. Uh, this is uh, honestly insane. I didn't expect so many people in here. Uh, is it okay if I take a picture? Yeah! Thank you. Here on the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you, thank you. I got you. Hi higher angle, but it's, it's more flattering, right? I got everyone, don't worry. Thank you all so much. I apologize. I'm having internet issues right now. Um, but we're, we're gonna, I'm going to get this working. But in the meantime, we could, we could do a Q&A. Will that work? Yes. And so if you have a question, please just line up in the middle. And uh, I will try to answer your question as I get this internet going. I do. It's, the internet's just a little slow, that's all. We're, we're making it work, don't worry. Let me know when you're ready. Take your time, Norm. Go ahead. Okay, so my main thing I want to know is if you're ever going to cover certain peripherals such as, you know, the Sega 32X, the CD, some of the obscure like combination ones like the Sega CD one that has Genesis built into it. Uh, if you're ever going to cover those, and what's your opinion on those? So I have covered the 32X, I remember. and I have covered the JVC XI, but as you all know, Sega put out a lot of hardware. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's really a matter of, I, I'm big on, I want to have the piece of hardware in my hand, I want to experience it, and I want to film it all pretty, you know? So, is, if I can get a hold of them, sure. Definitely would do those episodes. I don't remember, but have you done an episode on the Nomad yet? I have. Yes, okay. My favorite D-pad ever made is on a second Nomad. <laughs> Just let me just yeah. again. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Hello. Hi. Um, I just want to know, what's your favorite um, piece of device to um, kind of do the review or do a video on? Advice for a video? No, no. Your piece, your favorite piece of uh, hardware that you reviewed on a video. Oh, my favorite, my favorite piece of hardware, or just favorite video in general. Or video in general. Okay, my favorite video that I have ever made is uh, the video on Mario Paint. Yes. <laughs> um, and the reason I love that video, so that was I did a vote on Patreon. Um, for a topic and people wanted a Mario Paint video and I was like, okay, great. And I started doing research and I was like, oh, this video is going to be really short. Because like, obviously I can talk about Mario Paint and how the game works, but as far as development history, there's really not much on Mario Paint. And so I shifted the video to be more of a social history of Mario Paint. So how did Mario Paint... Um, how did Mario Paint influence people growing up and had, how it made an impact on them. And uh, I love the background music. <laughs> uh, and it, it turned into this really cool social history and there's people making really cool stuff with Mario Paint and there's game developers that were inspired by Mario Paint. So I, I love that video and I love how it came together. So it's a good Thank question. You. Thank you. Yeah, it didn't like Hello. Homestar Runner. For, wasn't like the first Homestar Runner. Video first Homestar Runner was a Mario Paint animation. Yeah. Yeah. Any, anyway, so I remember you, I found you on a website called Retroware many, many years oh, ago. Oh, yes, Retroware. Um, now, Rest, this, may it rest in peace. Yeah, seriously, honestly. A rip <laughs> Retroware. A anyone who remembers that site, uh, I don't know, yell. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, see, there you go. Yeah. Um, and so I was wondering, there's a lot of people who are on that site who yes. don't really have much of a footprint anymore. One of which is like uh, Roof from the Clan of the Grey Wolf. Whatever happened to some of those people? Do you know? Joey. I miss Joey. He never did finish his Dragon <laughs> Quest retrospective. So, I mean, most people from Retro are still around making stuff, but specifically, I actually saw Joey last month at a convention in Connecticut. And uh, he just came up to hang out with everyone, and he's doing great. He, he's, uh... He's married, he does community theater, has a, has a nice job, he's a scientist, you know, so. Tell him I miss him. I'll let him know. I'll let I finished that. that Dragon Quest retrospective, it's been 10 years. That's a good video, if you haven't checked that. Anyway, my favorite video of yours is the Tetris video. It's yeah. just incredible. Thank you very much. One of the, one of the greatest, like, short, one of the greatest short form documentaries I've ever seen on YouTube. It's oh, wow. absolutely impeccable. Wow, thank you.
I agree. They're uh, they're making a movie about that story. I knew they the would. <laughs> it will be on uh, Apple TV, I think. Wow. Oh. Okay. I, I yeah, sorry. Okay. So I I do I think I can tell this story now. Um, I was approached by some Hollywood writers to make a movie about that story. Because they're like, we saw your documentary, this is fascinating, this would make a great movie, we want to write a screenplay, and we want to work with you on it. And I said, yeah, let's do it. And then a couple months later, I heard back from them, they're like, oh, somebody already bought the rights to this story, and they already wrote the script, so, sorry. And, and that's the movie that's coming out on Apple TV. So there you go. Let's boycott it. No, you don't have to do that. I'm sure it'll be good. I think one of, somebody that made an X, he directed one of the X-Men movies, he's directing it. Uh, uh, I have no idea. <laughs> What's your question, sir? Uh, hi, Ed. Uh, uh, so, it's maybe hard to answer, but... Uh, okay. Like, so, uh, which one um, um, other videos that it... Did you... Do you think Inc. that was the most, most, um, the most challenging to make? Most challenging to make, okay. Um, I, have, I have two answers for this. The first one would be the Tetris video. Of course. Um, because there's just a lot of information and a lot of people involved and a lot of contracts and political disputes and everything. So just keeping track of all the information was tough. The second hardest video I ever made was the light gun video. And the reason is, getting all the hardware to work was difficult, getting all those light guns was difficult. So I think from a technical standpoint, that one was harder to make. Mm. I guess yeah. it's because the lights are too expensive. That, if you're familiar with that light gun video, there's one light gun in that video called the Bondi Hypershot, oh, God. Um, oh. which had a happy, it, had haptic feedback, so it, you know, rattled like an actual submachine gun. It only came out in Japan, and it was very expensive to get, as Mr. <laughs> Mr. Dink would say, very expensive. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. All right. Thanks a lot. Hello, sir. Hello. So many of your videos, you have to interview former uh, heads of companies, old people who worked on certain things. Mm -hmm. Throughout all of these various different videos you've made, there's so many uh, contacts that you've established. What is your favorite side story with one of those individuals that you maybe tell, and or which was the most personally fulfilling to get to interact with? Um, so I think my favorite interview I ever did was with Dave Capper, who made the U-Force. The U-Force controller. I know, it's not a great controller, um, but Dave Capper himself was a very nice man, and uh, he, he was a great interview. Uh, he had a lot of great sound bites, but he, invent, he invented so many other things. So, uh, Koosh Balls. He was involved with Koosh Balls. Um, do you guys remember? I think they're called sound bites. It's a lollipop that like plays music when you. <laughs> he invented that. He also invented. Um, oh, I can't remember the name of this product. It was. It came out in the early 2000s. It was like a 15 second clip of a song. Hit clips. Hit clips. <laughs> That's Dave Capra. Yeah. So he was great interview, and he kept everything. So I was talking to him. He was like. And he was like, oh yeah, the U-Force. Yeah, I have the prototype of that. And he just like brought out this black box with red LED lights and he, he, it still worked. So, definitely him. That was a great interview. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you for making your videos because if it wasn't for you, I would have never known about retro gaming in the first place. Wow. I, I found your videos when I was like, Five? Oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 That's how I got into all of this. This is why I care about frog. Um, but yeah. That's amazing. I just for reference, I started my YouTube channel 14 years ago <laughs> in 2008. So, That's amazing that uh, five years old. That's crazy.
Uh, but my real question, um, what's your favorite era of gaming? Ooh. Because saying a console's kind of lame. <laughs> yeah, so there in, in the historical community, there's a big debate about console eras, like, oh, the first generation of console, the second generation of consoles, because it's like, well, they came out in such random times, like, you, how can you group them all into a generation, you know? Um, my favorite era right now, it kind, of, it kind of shifts. I don't know if you have noticed this on my channel currently, but I have covered a lot of stuff that came out around 1990 and 1991. And that was a great era because it was the end of the NES, or actually the, probably the peak of the NES era. And then the 16-bit era begins. And that was just a really cool time. So I'm kind of into that right now. That's a good question. Thank you very much. Hello. Hello, sir. Um, so the question I have is, which topic that you have done a video on has been the most difficult to research? The most difficult topic to research. Ooh. Um. <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. I, the, some, some of the harder videos to make are, so I'm not a super technical person. Um, so doing a video like on the U-Force or the Mega Modem, um, I had to like learn how modems work and like all the lingo involved with uh, a modem. Like there was, there's a, a term called the baud rate of a modem. And I was like, baud rate? And that's like this, an old school term for the speed of the modem, I guess? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, a, little, it's a little different. Um, so I, I, I would, I would say stuff like that, like the technical, like in or like learning how the U Force worked, and I had to learn about like what I do. Honestly, is I have a friend who's an engineer, and I pay him to like look at patents. Of, of like the U-Force, and I was like, I want you to explain this to me like I'm 10 years old. How does the U-Force work? And he writes me up a document and says, here's how it works, here's the technology he uses, so. You have an interpreter. He's basically a translator, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Another thing that's difficult is, um, I, so for like the Super Mario World video, I got a lot of magazines from Japan. I don't speak Japanese and I don't read Japanese. So I have a friend who translates all of these articles for me, and I feel bad because I send him stuff all the time. But you know, I, he's compensated, and uh, it just that can take some time to get stuff translated. But good question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh huh. Hello. Hello. So um, first of all, I would like to say I really like your videos, and I've kind of been dream daydreaming to see you and. My favorite thing about your videos is your voice. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I, a lot of people come up to me at conventions, and in, I know this is a compliment, but they say, oh my gosh, I love your, your voice and your narration. I watch it uh, when I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and I get it because I, I like the ASMR thing. Like, I fall asleep to ASMR videos all the time. Uh, my favorite is Gentle Whispering, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, similar yeah. Um, but my main question is, yeah. what do you think about the Game Boy camera, and what do you know, and what can you tell us about it? Ah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, so I have never researched the Game Boy camera, so I can't really tell you much about its development, but I can say that when I, growing up, I wanted a Game Boy camera very, very badly. <laughs> Um, and I remember the commercials, smile, here it on Game Boy Camera, here it is. So, uh, cool piece of technology, would definitely love to do a video on it one day. And there's the, the printer as well, you can print uh -huh. it as well. So yeah, thank you. Alright, yep. Oh. Hello. Hello. Uh, I gotta say, I've been a big fan of your videos for a long time, from back in the retro -air TV days. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and I was uh, just wondering, uh, would you ever cover the Pioneer Laser Active? <laughs> if you can get me one, I'll do it. <laughs> send, send it to my PO box. I'll. <laughs> it's it's every any topic is. I'm totally open to doing. It. It's just a matter of getting my hands on it, you know. Yeah, that's understandable. Yep. 
Uh, by the way, uh, my favorite video of yours is the one on Tengen. Tengen! Oh, yeah. 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 That was, uh, the Tengen video was kind of my beginning of, I wanted to make this more documentary style, PBS style video. So Tengen was kind of the first one of those that I did that was really what I was looking for. So thank you very much. Yeah, that was a, that was a fun video. Hi. Hi. Uh, love your videos. Thank you. And I want to say you're very well spoken just in person. That's really cool. Oh. Thank you very much. Uh, anyways, I just watched your Super Mario RPG video. Okay. That one. Uh, but my question is, thanks for pulling all these like obscure things in. I love getting to see all of those. But the question is, yeah. how do you go about one finding out about all these, mm -hmm. getting them? Okay. And then I'm a collector, as I'm sure a lot of us here are. But yeah. how much of that stuff yeah. do you get to keep in the game? <laughs> so most things that I film on the show I purchased with, uh, you know, all those big YouTube bucks I made. <laughs> Swimming in money, I don't know how to do it. Uh, so yeah, you know, most of the funds that I make from the show go back into the show so I can buy these yeah. obscure things. And this, your other question of how do I find this stuff, are you referring to like some of the research stuff I find or are you referring to like some of the... How do you topics find like out about like the your recent like the TV? Oh, like the shark. Yeah. How do you find out about? It? You just like you. I'm sure you're just continually researching. But like, how do you choose which obscure products you want to cover? So the on usually I I stumble on it's funny I stumble upon stuff when I'm researching other stuff. So with the Sharp SF1, I was researching for the Super Mario World video, and I was reading these Japanese magazines, and they had an article about the SF1, and I said, oh, well that's really interesting, and I just make a little note in my notebook, Sharp SF1, and then when I'm looking for a new topic, I, my notebook has a huge topic list, and I just kind of, I organize it by category, and I just say, well, let's do a hardware one, I feel like making a hardware video, and I saw the SF1, yeah. So it's really, I just stumble upon it, and I think it's interesting, I'll, I'll do a video on it. Yeah, sweet, thank you so much. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. Hi. So I just want to say something because I, okay. I love a lot of your videos. Thank you. I mean, one of the only ones I, I had watched, <laughs> it's kind of one of your early days back then. So when I was like 10 years old? <laughs> like back then, like, like almost 9 to 10 years ago. Okay. It was like one of the first ones I remember watching was the... Game Genie. The Game Genie video. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's what was the Universal versus Nintendo games. Uh-huh. Well, I also been like one of my favorite videos, I say, is, well, one of them is the Mega Man games on Sega. The Mega Man Sega yeah. games, okay. Then, it got me, it, well, maybe, you know, to find out about the Sega Genesis Y War. In fact, I, we, I just recently got the, um, the Wii release. Yeah, okay, so they re-released Wild the Wars, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 They, they were selling some, some of it at the Expo Center. And another one of my favorites is, of course, the Tetris video, because it, it, it was so informative. It's like, it's like, you wouldn't expect a game about blocks to be to have so much history about it. All right, there's a story behind every game. Even, even a game as simple as blocks. Yeah. <laughs> For my question... All right, what's your question? <laughs> If you would have to choose which video, if you, do you, if you want to, which video you want to remake, which video, if you want to, if you were to remake any video, mm -hmm. which one would it be? If I had to remake any video, this is a video. It would probably be. I did a video on um, when Nintendo bought the Seattle Mariners, <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> I love that video, but I got, as some of you might know, I got sent a cease and desist from Major League Baseball. And they said, you have to delete this video and all evidence of this video. Uh, so I did. There, uh, there is a uh, bootleg version on YouTube, and then wink wink. But I would love to remake that video and like work with MLB on it and maybe like you know, I made it six years ago, and back then MLB was like 
you cannot upload MLB clips unless it's on the official MLB YouTube channel. But I feel like they've gotten a little more relaxed on that rule, so I'm hoping oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I would like to uh, I'd, I'd like to to remake that video and not not be threatened. <laughs> that, that, was, that was my question. Yeah. yeah. Again, I love your videos, and I hope you, I hope you continue continue making quality videos for years to come. Thank you very much. Hello. Well, this is awkward. My question was, how do we get the uh, Nintendo and the Seattle Mariners videos back? <laughs> I can talk a little more about it. So, you know, they sent me a cease and desist, and I said, well, how am I going to... So I emailed their uh, licensing team, and I was like, I want to I want to use all these clips. I sent them a list, and they said, oh, yeah, that'll, they, we'll, we'll look into how much this will cost, and it was like... It, it was... I, it would have... I, I couldn't afford it, let's just say that. <laughs> it was a lot of money. Um, so then I thought, well, maybe I can work with like an animator. We can like re we can like animate the clips and use like the audio, but was that like, was going to be a huge hassle. I so. feel like people use highlights of baseball games and stuff on their YouTube videos all the time. Yeah, but you know they're they're just haters. They 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 just want to see see me fail. <laughs> but yeah, I, like I said, but that's why I think they're a little more relaxed now because there's channels like John Boy Media that yeah. you know yeah. commentate on MLB clips all the time, and it's like. And these clips are from the 80s. Yeah. 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 See, this is what you get for only having him play. Yeah, maybe should be ask him will be again or something. Back up. We'll, we'll see if we can make that. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, it's VLC Media Player. My <laughs> favorite media player. Uh, if I can say, you, uh, huge fan. <laughs> been, been using you since high school. So thank you. Thank you for all your work. Quick thinking, you are in the building. Donkey Kong is real. He is here. He is throwing barrels at the inhabitants. All you have is a plushy Mega Man arm cannon and a toy figure of Kirby. What are you doing to save the population of this building before we all die? <laughs> I, I just run and get help. Call, call, call the police or something. Mental note taken. See you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've been watching your videos since I was like 13, 14 years old. Oh, here we go again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Only 15, don't worry about it. Don't worry. <laughs> so, um, so, like, with your Mario Paint video, you did more of like a, a retrospective on like the, um, the cultural impact of the game. Have you thought mm -hmm. about doing any more videos on how certain games or peripherals or certain things have impacted certain niche cultures like that? Earthbound! Halo! <laughs> Uh, yes, to your question, and yes to whoever shouted Earthbound. That's a great example of a game that has made a huge cultural impact. Um, but yeah, I'd love to do more of those. Um, actually, the next video I'm doing, which I wanted to talk about in this panel, um, has made a huge social impact, and uh, we'll talk about it here in a minute. So. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Hello. Hey, uh, I've been watching since I was 30. This is. Real question though. What unsubstantiated game rumor, right, game industry rumor, would you love to find out is true and then investigate? A rumor that I, I found out is true? Well, if you have one that's true, that's fantastic. But if there's one you've heard, you're like, oh, I gotta find out if this, this is true or not. Oh, gosh. Okay. There is there is a few. All right. So I, I do want to point out one that is false that I, I thought was interesting. Have you guys heard that quote from... It's a famous Shigeru Miyamoto quote. Oh. A, good, a good game is... What is it? A delayed game is... Eventually good, uh, or uh, yeah, a rush game is bad forever. So that's attributed to Miyamoto, but he didn't actually say that. <laughs> it seems like something he might say, but I actually somebody tweeted, they're like, I can't find the source for this quote, which is true. There's no direct source for that quote. Uh, it was a quote from another game developer from like the late 90s in a magazine. 
I, I'm sorry, I can't remember who it was, but um, yeah, not me, Moto. Uh, so as far as like what rumors that are true, I I was interviewing a guy, and I can't reveal who it is. He told me there was a company smuggling cocaine in arcade cabinets. <laughs> And I, I was like, whoa, do you have, like, more information on this? And he was like, I, I, I can tell you to talk to. I'm telling you it's true. They got busted by the FBI. And I'm just like, wow. Look into this. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm working on it. Yeah, that's, yeah. Also, there is no left-handed power glove. Thank you. I mean, if you're playing that. <laughs> just, Hello. Hey, I just want to say thank you so much for doing what you do. Like, you're it's, welcome. It's, it's awesome. Um, I was going to say your last thing Sorry. definitely takes you know winners don't do drugs on the arcade cabinets to a different level. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. Um, so the question I had for you, I'm a big Mario fan. Do you have a favorite Mario game? Oh I'm yeah, really, Super really, Mario Brothers Three. Mario Brothers Three. Yeah, that's my favorite Mario, Mario game. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I grew up playing it. My, me and my brother yeah. played it. I, I just have good memories with it. And it's a good Marco game. It is. So it really is. Is. It's a really good game. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hi. All right, it's going to look a little ridiculous. <laughs> Don't mind me. All right. Hi, Norm. My Hello. name is Indica. Um, Hi. First off, I'm sure you're going to hear this from everybody, but thank you so much. You're welcome. Watching your videos has always been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Just like everybody else, I've been watching them since high school. And actually, I have you to thank for uh, being one of the reasons why I actually made a video game uh, club back in high school. Oh, that's um, awesome. Maybe like six years ago. That's cool. <laughs> I, any, any time like, uh, educational endeavors are involved with my videos, I, I'm thrilled. So, yeah. thank you. Yeah, it was uh, actually pretty funny. It was convincing an English teacher that this was for educational purposes. So that's what I used your uh, channel for. Uh, yeah. We were like, just brought a couple consoles and had friends play. Yeah. So. You could say, look, this guy made an hour video about Tetris. <laughs> yeah, so this is great. Right. Right. Super educational, all that jazz. Yeah. But because of that, I actually got into video game retrospectives. So okay. I'm happy to thank for that. You're welcome. Because I wouldn't be collecting any history. Um, question for you. Okay. What's probably the one topic that you've looked up that you just hated? Hated making a video on it, hated looking up, it was just a Oh, a video that I was hated not making. Fun oh, whatsoever. Man, I don't know if I can say this. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely boring. A boring video. Gosh. I don't know. I think you do. <laughs> Okay, well, okay, I did not love making the Aladdin deck enhancer video. Oh. Listen, okay, I, it's a very interesting piece of hardware, but the games on it are just really bad, and I had to play all of them, and I had to record the footage, and a lot of the footage, because when I record footage, I want to show, like, decent gameplay of the game, but these games are so broken, it's kind of hard to get decent gameplay, so I just, I had a, I had a tough time making that video. Yeah. Well, thank you from all of us in the audience to you. Thank you for going through all that. You're it's welcome. It's actually a pretty fun video. Thank you. My sacrifice. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. We have time for two more questions, I think. Hi there. Hello. Um, so first of all, um, I'm not, I'm not going to like, you already know I've watched your videos, but I also, back in 2016, won your Jeopardy thing at you Game did. on Expo. Yes. So, <laughs> but my actual question is, uh, when it comes to like researching for videos, have you ever gone down like a rabbit hole and lose focus on like the main thing you're trying to research on? <laughs> yeah, it happens a lot. Yeah. I mean, I've spent an entire day verifying one sentence in my script. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Like I'll. Uh, I'll, I'll read something and I'll be like, well, I, I need to figure out where this came from. And I'll just like go down a rabbit hole trying to verify one sentence. And uh, yeah, like with the SF1 video, one, one thing that drove me nuts was the extension port on the back. 
it's it's not the same as the the one on the Super Nintendo. It's a totally different port, but it says it's the extension port. And I was like, what it, is it the same? What does it do? And you know, there's only two things that came out on that extension port. It's that Exertainment bike yep. and the Satellaview, which yep. doesn't even work anymore. So it's like, how do I even verify this thing works? So yeah. yeah. I definitely go down rabbit holes. I feel like uh you know that it's always sunny meme with Charlie Day and oh, the yeah. board, and he's like trying to piece everything together. Yeah, I mean it happens all the time. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, yeah, Charlie Day is Luigi. I think he'll do a good job. Chris Pratt. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna give nope. him a chance. Uh, so I've got a research question as well. Okay. Um, I'm just kind of curious what your process and methodology is. Kind of like where you start when you start researching a topic and if you hit any dead ends and what you do to kind of overcome them sure so obviously the first thing is you pick a topic and i always try to pick a topic that i'm interested in and uh that i'll have fun researching and then it's really just i just pull every resource i can i just cast the wide net and i just try to find everything i can on that and then i have to piece it all together and tell a cohesive story with all that information. And that's that's basically history. If if you're a historian is just like a really good stalker. How would you even go about finding like the top of it you're researching in which magazines? I'm sure there's oh. so much. Oh, so, so uh, what I do is I have a, a hard drive that has an archive of Japanese magazines that have been scanned, and they're usually available on like the Internet Archive. And I download them all, and I, I put them in folders by year and the name of the magazine, and then I index them with Adobe Acrobat, because Adobe will scan all the text and make it searchable, and then I can just control F and look for whatever, and it'll pull up every magazine that has ever mentioned the Sega Mega Modem. Awesome. You know, something like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Final question. Last thing here for you. So, are you ever going to co cover topics such as the co composition of certain songs, like yeah. Super Mario Bros. theme, Green Hill? Um, Video game music, yes. Uh, sp like, dedicated videos, I I'm not sure yet. I've never thought about doing that, but I do love, uh, actually in this next video, I talk about the music quite a bit. Um, so, yeah, I definitely love that aspect. It's always cool to see um, the mindset of, of the composers when they're making this stuff and the limitations they had to overcome. That's always the most interesting part. Yeah, I was, I was thinking also, like, you know, something like the software they used to create music. I know there's one video floating around the internet about how they made music with gems mm -hmm. on, on the Sega Genesis. So, if you ever cover that, just, just like see it, you know? All right. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you all uh, for the questions. I really appreciate it. Um, we, we are we're short on time, unfortunately. Um, but I, I guess we could leave it to a vote. I could do like a speed presentation on my next video, or we could do Jeopardy. I don't think we have time for both. Uh, I Show of hands, who wants the presentation? Show of hands, who wants Jeopardy? Oh, that's very cool. <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's do the presentation. I, I think I can do this in, in 10 minutes.
Okay, here's what we're going to do. This might be a little... Uh, this is different, but I think it'll work. That's what I'm doing. Um, so instead of extending, because usually I put the slideshow over here and then I have my notes here, but we're just gonna we're just gonna look at it. You guys see it? You guys see that? Yeah. yeah. So my, my notes are on the bottom. Don't read my notes. Okay. All right. Uh, spoiler. Yeah, you're gonna get spoiled by this. <laughs> okay. Uh, before I, I shouldn't have done that. What's, <laughs> this ruins my question. I was going to say trivia. What's the best selling game on the Super Famicom? It's Super Mario Kart. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, this, this fact actually shocked me because Super Mario, you know, there's, it's the best selling Super Famicom game. Um, and that's beating Super Mario World. That's beating Dragon Quest. That's being the Final Fantasies, which are huge games in Japan. But yeah, Super Mario Kart was the best-selling game on the Super Famicom. 3.82 million units sold. And the other, the other, the more important thing besides sales numbers is I want to talk about how Mario Kart kind of changed the social dynamic of a video game console in the living room. Because I'm sure you all have stories growing up of playing Super Mario Kart with your parents, or maybe your siblings, or maybe your friends. And it got probably pretty heated sometimes. I think. <laughs> but it was also friendly because the game allowed you to do like Grand Prix mode with your friend. You could play together and like try to win the trophy, which is what me and my, my best friend did growing up. Because I don't know if you guys remember, but Super Mario Kart's kind of a hard game. It's very difficult. Um, so yeah, like one of us would like try to make sure the computer players weren't. Uh, you know, we would like save our red shells and like wait for them to pass and then shoot them with the red shell. But uh, this game started as a experiment and it begins with F Zero. F Zero fans, all right. Uh, F Zero. F Zero was a launch title for the Super Famicom, which came out on November twenty first, nineteen ninety. Uh, got huge critical praise. Uh, it scored higher than Super Mario World in a lot of reviews. Uh, people were really impressed by the technological uh, advancements with the Super Famicom, and F-Zero really showed it off with Mode 7, uh, which Mode 7 takes a background layer, and it can rotate it and distort it, and it can make it look like a pseudo, it's like a pseudo 3D effect, basically. So, yeah, what you're seeing is like a, a hover, that hover car is a sprite, and he's racing on a background layer that's just been like distorted this way. Um, but there's one major flaw with F-Zero. It was only a one-player game. It wasn't a two-player game. And so Shigeru Miyamoto was not a fan of that because the Super Famicom came with two controllers. It did not come with a power adapter. It did not come with AV cables, but it came with two controllers. Okay? Um, and so Miyamoto insisted it come with two controllers because he wanted developers to keep multiplayer games in mind. He didn't want them to like hold back when making their games. And so he took he took he wanted a two-player racing game like F Zero. So he went to two of his colleagues. One was Hideki Kono on the left, and the on the right is uh, Tadashi Sugiyama. And they had uh, Hideki Kono had been with Nintendo since 1986. His first game was Ice Hockey, fun little game. Um, and, but he, he kind of, he kind of uh, got most of his experience working on the Super Mario team, so he worked on Super Mario Bros. 3 and Super Mario World. He did the maps in those games. And then uh, Tadashi Sugiyama, uh, he was in the creative department, and he actually worked with Miyamoto in the creative department, but he designed uh, Popo and Nana from Ice Climber. And, but his biggest project was controversial. He did Zelda II, The Adventure of Life. Oh, God. I know. Uh, so, and, and Sugiyama also had experience using Mode 7 because he directed Pilot Links as well, which is a great game. So, I mean, this is an F Zero racetrack. Um, and like I said, it uses Mode 7, so it can manipulate this background layer. And if you notice, these F Zero tracks have super long straightaways. 
And they did that for a reason, it's because they wanted you to feel like you were going super fast. Um, and so this background layer is about 100 screens. Oh, wow. It's 100 different screens. And so they tried to do this for two players. You have to make 100 screens appear twice on the, on the television. And uh, the, Hideki Kono and uh, Sugiyama quickly realized they couldn't do this for two players. Uh, Super Famicom, technically it can do it, but at that time they were like, this is way too hard to make this work. And so they thought, well, maybe we can try something else. So they basically shrunk down the tracks. They made them small. This is 16 screens mm -hmm. instead of 100. But they can't have those long straightaways anymore. They can only do twists and turns. Um, so they can't use these super fast vehicles in F-Zero, but what would work? Maybe they could use go-karts? Maybe that would work? So go-karting, uh, it's been around a while. It's a very popular amusement park. Right, but it's actually uh, a lot of F1 racers. Anyone a fan of F1 racing? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, a lot of F1 racers uh, start their training in go-karts. Uh, there is competitive go-kart racing, still. Um, There's one big problem, though. No one on the development team had ever been in a go-kart. They had no idea how to handle. They had no idea what one really looked like. They just knew go-karts were a thing. And so one of the artists on staff, his name is Yoichi Kotabe, and he was from the anime industry. He was a veteran of the anime industry. He worked with Miyazaki too. He did work with Miyazaki, yeah. So he, he, he was on the, the development team as an artist, and he's actually responsible for the Mario we see today. If, you, if you've ever seen the original artwork for Super Mario Brothers, Mario looks a little weird, and Princess Peach looks a little weird, and Bowser looks weird. Kotabe came in and said, we have to standardize all this. And that's how we have the Mario we see today. Um, so he came in and he said, well, if you want to know what go-karts are like, you should just go ride in some go-karts. He said, in the anime industry, we would just go do the thing that we wanted to draw. You know? So they went to an amusement park. Miyamoto did not want it to happen. But <laughs> the, bu the budget would not allow it. But uh, they insisted, and they went and they rode on some go-karts. And the illustrators took illustrations, and the engineer, the programmers and the engineers uh, like got a feel for the physics of the car and that low perspective and the slow speed. And so um, they took that information and they came up with a little prototype. So you see on the left we have this little generic guy with a helmet you know, and some coveralls and he's racing. And then they also experimented with these like hover carts, uh, the F Zero style, they were a lot slower, um, but they definitely loved the carts the most. The problem was everybody looked the same, so as you can see, they're just like different colored guys, and they said, "Well, design wise, this doesn't look too good." Um, and so they thought, "Well, maybe we can come up with characters that are." you know, distinct and recognizable from behind. And uh, you'll never guess who they chose. It was Sonic. It wasn't Sonic. It's Mario. And I have to leave it at that. Sorry, we're out of time. But, uh, thank you all. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And to the right are the playlist of the Portland Retro 2022 and some other interesting videos. Thank you.